There's a lot of emerging interest in developing multimodal foundational models similar to foundational models for language, which are LLMs. LAVA, which stands for Large Language and Vision Assistant, is the first paper to apply instruction tuning to visual data, thereby pushing the possibilities of large multimodal models or LMMs. In this video, we are going to dive into the first paper in the LAVA series of papers aptly titled Visual Instruction Tuning. Though this work came out in April and is a bit old, this lays the foundation for the just released LAVA 1.5, which is titled Improved Baselines with Visual Instruction Tuning. There are also other papers in the series like LAVA RLHF, which introduce the concept of factually augmented RLHF. This work was followed by LAVA MED that trained a LAVA model based conversational agent to answer open-ended research questions on biomedical images. So without further ado, let's jump into the very first LAVA paper. One of the biggest advantages of large language models is that we can instruction tune the LLM foundation models to make them more interactive and adapt them to users' instructions. For this, we have specialized instruction tuning datasets. In this example, we can see that the input is she chose to make a salad for lunch tomorrow and Sunday. And the question is, how long did it take for her to make a salad? But you can instruct the LLM to respond with just S or no, so that the output is a no or an S. This is how you can add instructions to the LLMs. When it comes to large multimodal models, even though we have witnessed a spike in multimodal data, where images and text are coupled, all these datasets like Lion just have image caption pass with an image and a caption corresponding to it. So in order to generate instructions, we can leverage powerful LLMs like GPT to gather data points with instructions in order to instruction tune the vision model. Let's say we're given an image XV and its caption XC. We can create a set of questions which are similar to how humans will ask to describe an image. For example, all these instructions are variations to describe an image. For each of these questions under given image caption pair, we can come up with a prompt similar to this. And this imitates a human instruction. But we can't do this for millions of images as we will soon start lacking diversity. So to improve the diversity, we not only include captions as context in the prompts, but also the bounding boxes. So now the input to GPT is of two types. One is the caption. For example, for this image on my right, the caption is a group of people standing outside of a black vehicle with various luggage. Or another caption could be, luggage surrounds a vehicle in an underground parking area. And for context type 2, which is boxes, it could be the person and the backpack and the suitcase all annotated with the locations. With these input prompts to GPT, we can collect three type of responses, namely conversations. For example, the question could be, what type of vehicle is featured in the image? And the answer could be, the image features a black sports utility vehicle. The next response type could be a detailed description of the image. For example, the image is an underground parking area with a black sports utility vehicle parked. There are three people in the scene with one person standing, uh, blah, blah, blah. And the third response type could be complex reasoning 
where the question is, what challenges do these people face? And the answer could be, in the image, a group of people is standing outside a black SUV in a parking area, surrounded by various pieces of luggage. So with that process, we can manage to collate a large data set. The authors seem to have collated 158,000 unique combinations of language image instruction following samples, which can be readily used to train the neural network they have proposed. In terms of the proposed architecture, it has a combination of a visual encoder followed by a projection layer, which is again followed by a language model. For the visual encoder, they've gone for a pre-trained clip, which is VITL14, and the output of vision encoder is ZV. Uh, this latent representation is passed through a projection layer, which is a simple linear layer to connect the image features to the word embedding space and is represented HV. And these outputs, HV, have the same dimensions as the input of the uh, language model. For the language model, they have chosen to go for a LAMA, which seems to be an obvious choice. In terms of the training, if we take an image XV, they first generate multi-turn conversation data Let's say the turn T is 5. So this set has pairs XQ and XA, which is equal to 5. And the first one, they choose randomly. And the subsequent ones, they just choose the pass after that and form the instruction set. And this instruction set is used to train the model in two stages. In the first stage, they fix the weights of vision encoder and the language model and only train the weights of the projection layer. This is what they call as the feature alignment because the output of the vision encoder lies in a different feature space to that of the language model. There's a need to align them both and the projection layer takes care of the alignment. And in the next stage is the end-to-end -end training or the fine-tuning stage where the projection model and the language model are trained and the vision encoder is still frozen. So this leads to the language model producing the response corresponding to the any given image. And they seem to have trained for uh, two use cases. One is the multimodal chatbot and the other one is the science question answering. Surprisingly, even though they have trained with very few samples for multimodal chat, they have compared it with uh, Blip2 and Open Flamingo, and the result seems to be far better. And that model actually seems to be conversational when you're passing images compared to the outputs from Blip2 or Flamingo. For example, if you show this image and ask Lava what is unusual about this image, Lava clearly says the unusual aspect of this image is a man ironing clothes on the back of a minivan or van. A similar response also comes from GPT-4. The unusual thing about this image is that a man is ironing clothes on an ironing board attached to the roof of a moving taxi. But in case of Blip or Open Flamingo, the response is as simple as a man sitting on the back of a yellow cab or the man just drying his clothes on the hood of a car. So definitely the model has become very conversational and also has improved on the reasoning capabilities. In another example, if you show Lava this image and ask, can you explain this meme in detail? Lava goes on to explain in detail with several sentences. But when it, when it comes to Blip2 or Open Flamingo, it just says, sometimes I just look at pictures of the Earth from space and marvel how beautiful it is. Or Open Flamingo says, it's a picture of a chicken nugget on the International Space Station. When it comes to science question answering data set, they are categorized into different categories like 
natural science, social science, and language science. And under each of the categories, we can see that LAVA performs better than the GPT-4 model, which is quite impressive for an open source model. So definitely the model seems to have conversational abilities and also has produced uh, results that is state of the art compared to uh, GPT-4. Let's wait for much more models to come, which in the multimodal space. Until then, I'm signing off and I will see you in my next video. Take care.